Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. If you watch The Real News, you might have seen a series we did a few months ago exploring the concept of odious debt. That's where a country ruled by dictators borrows money in modern sense from usually Western big banks. And those banks, understanding and knowingly, lend this money to this dictatorship knowing the money will not benefit the people of that country, knowing that that country is unlikely to be really capable of repaying these debts. And, and the concept of odious debt is that a subsequent government can declare these debts odious, that the bank should have known better, and not pay them back. Well, now an African country is apparently saying exactly that. Now joining us to talk about the issue is Leonce Endukamana. He's the director of the Africa Policy Program at the Political Economy Research Institute in Amherst, Massachusetts. And he's also the co-author of the book, Africa's Odious Debt, How Foreign Loans and Capital Flight Bled a Continent. Thanks very much for joining us, Leonce. Thank you very much. So, so talk to us what's happening in Tunisia, because uh, uh, maybe quickly tell us, remind us again what the historical precedent for this is, and then what is Tunisia saying? Thank you. Um, first of all, Tunisia is uh, in the north of the, the African continent, and many people remember uh, the country as uh, the origin of what is now being referred to as the, uh, the Arab Spring, where uh, a popular revolution toppled the regime of Ben Ali, but uh, Tunisia was, had been in the headlines before as uh, one of the most uh, uh, best performing uh, African economies in terms of growth, uh, competitiveness, uh, and also uh, even in terms of political stability. But now uh, the country is back in the, head, in the headlines again as the new government is uh, proposing to take a very, a very uh, original historical stance on the debt incurred by, incurred by the past regime. And the new president is basically saying that they want a, a systematic audit into the debt incurred by the Benali regime to establish the legitimacy of those debts. What they don't want to see is that they are shortchanging the, Afri the, the, the Tunisian people by paying debts which may have contributed to uh, only enriching the Benali regime and his, uh, his associates. Now, Ben Ali is the, ben Ali is the last uh, dictator who was overthrown. And, and this concept of odious debt, the, the American government, in fact, historically, has recognized this as a legitimate concept in international law, correct? Yes, the, the, the United uh, uh, States government has recognized it and actually used it. For example, after the, the, the war in, in Cuba, the, the government uh, refused to acknowledge, to recognize the debt incurred by the by the past uh, the past regime, we also remember that after the Iraq War, uh, the U.S. government really militated for the uh, annulment or the cancellation of the debt that Saddam Hussein regime had had incurred, under the argument that that debt actually is the is, is some of uh, some of the debt was used to consolidate the oppressive regime of the of the Saddam uh, by Saddam. So it was argued that it would be unfair to ask the, the Iraqi people to continue paying those debts. Now, one of the things that, that happens in many African countries uh, is that these, this money gets loaned to the country, but the regime in power actually pockets, uh, individuals in the regime actually pocket the money and put it right back in those same banks' bank accounts, except in their personal bank accounts. And the banks know all of this. That's, that's part of the argument. Is that also part of the argument in Tunisia? Yes. The point is that debt can be distinguished between the amounts that were used to finance development programs, including infrastructure, education, and there's plenty of good infrastructure and there's plenty of good education in, in Tunisia, that th those debts will be honored, that the president has made it very clear. But the debts that were cannot be traced to any use for development purposes, certainly having been squandered and, and embezzled by the former regime, will not be legitimate, and those should be repudiated by, by, the, by, the, by the, current, the current government. So this is a big deal for the banks because this would establish a, a very important precedent. I mean, even if the money embezzled, if, if there was in Tunisia, may not be, you know, that much. We'll see how much it is. You, you've analyzed other countries with a similar situation, and I think you've said sometimes the, the amount of embezzlement is, is up at 80% of the loans. 
that, that the majority of the money was actually embezzled. So if this, if this president, precedent is established of, of having to audit before any repayment takes place, this opens up a whole can of worms from the point of view of the banks. Yes, in fact, we, we, even in the book, we argue that uh, if for, if for the long term, um, it, the debt audits and the repudiation of uh, odious debt would actually serve the interest of bankers and the global financial system in general because it would set a precedent to enforce transparent management of, of loans. In the case of Tunisia, and why it is a, it's a very in, in interesting case, is it, 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 the, the audit will certainly find that a, a, a large amount of the, of the loans were used for development purposes, and that would reassure the lenders. But it is useful to be reassured that none of the, uh, of the private wealth amassed abroad was financed by external loans. That would be reassuring for the, for the lenders as well. Well, ex except, except for those lenders who are in on the deal. Of course. Then it would also be useful to see which lenders are playing by the rules and which lenders are siding by with the corrupt leaders. So what's happening then in terms of the cooperating uh, with the audit? Do the, first of all, does Tunisia need the bank's cooperation to do a proper audit? And if it does, are the, is there any sense they're going to cooperate in this? Because I guess to cooperate, they're going to have to agree with the underlying assumption that Tunisia may be able to say we're not going to pay part of this. Um, first of all, uh, technically, the, the Tunisia doesn't need the cooperation of the banks. Uh, Tunisia has the record of the loans that, ha that, that came into the country. And Tunisia is going to, um, the, the leadership is going to put, put together a team, if they want to do it the way other countries have done it, for example, Ecuador, would need to put, uh, put together a team, an objective team, probably including international, international experts, because you need a high degree of objectivity to evaluate the sources and uses of external loans. Now, if Tunisia, if the, 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 the commission that to be put in place that cannot trace the use of a particular loan, the, the burden of proof is on the bank, not on the country, not on the, on the people. It, uh, it is up to the bank to then demonstrate how the loan was used how it, ha it was used to finance development. If they cannot provide that proof, then the loan should be considered as purchase. Right. Now, is, uh, this is, as I said, a very big deal to the banks because if this leads to a whole examination of lending practices to Africa and, and embezzlement and banks' collaboration or collusion with the embezzlement, you've pointed out in your book that Africa as a whole is, pr is essentially a creditor continent, not a debtor continent, if they could recover all of this embezzled money. Um, so what's, what is the attitude of the banks so far vis-a-vis -vis Tunisia? Do they even accept the concept that there is such a thing as odious debt? I haven't seen any particular um, uh, information vis-a-vis -vis, um, uh, uh, banks that have lent to, to African, private banks that have lent to, to Tunisia. It's still to, to be seen. But what is encouraging, again, is, first of all, domestically to see a leadership that really is willing to take that stand, historical stand, to basically be on the side of the people, because it's in the interest of the Tunisian people. Secondly, what is also encouraging, encouraging is that there, is some, there are some signs internationally of goodwill to cooperate and help and, and assist the, the Tunisian government, including, for example, the, I, uh, there was some, I read some news where the, the Belgian government has declared that it will declare odious any debt that I mean to cancel any debt that's found to be uh, to be odious by the by the, by the debt audit, the Swiss government has been cooperating with the investigation the invest, in, investigators from from Tunisia that are trying to ta to track down the, the the illicit wealth by the former the former the former regime. We I think that this moment this time is as good as it has ever been in terms of providing a chance to any government in, in Africa to really look into closely, look closely into, into past debt. Uh, with all the pressure o on uh, tracking down illicit financial flows, financing uh, that may be financing uh, uh, terrorism, the, all, the, all the efforts to uh, beef up the anti-corruption legislation in the US, in the UK, all that really militates to providing a, a, a context where a willing government with a determined uh, uh, leadership can actually make 
advance the cause of uh, the cause uh, uh, of the fight against. Okay. Against. All right. We'll come back to you then uh, when when this audit proceeds and, and we're d deeper into it and we see what Tunisia concludes. We'll come back and talk to you again about this. Thanks very much, Leon. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on the Real News Network. And don't forget, if you want to see more reports like this, there's a donate button over here because if you don't click on that, we can't do this. <laughs>